Hey there, welcome to the Girl Go Global podcast, where faith and works are empowered. With every episode, we're embracing our multi-layered lives with faith, know-how, and grit. I'm your host, Dr. Jasmine, and I'm ready to go global with you. Let's get started. Welcome to the Girl Go Global podcast, where faith and works are empowered. I'm your girl, Dr. Jasmine, and I'm so excited that you decided to join me today. If you have not liked, shared, and subscribed to the Girl Go Global podcast, don't forget to do it. I'll pause while you take a moment. All right, we're back. Thank you so much. I I would love, love, love to hear how you are enjoying our content. So... Today, I have with me a special guest, my girl, Tiffany Renee of The Muse and The Messenger. She will be joining me today, and we have a very special conversation that we'd love to bring to you. And the topic of today's episode is, do you want a man or not? Oh, Lord. (laughs) (laughs) Why don't you say hello to the Girl Go Global community? Hey, Global Girls. How y'all feeling out there? Dr. Jazz about to get in everybody business. <laughs> well, I'm not getting into nobody business, but I am going to be sharing some of mine. Okay, let's hear it. Well, you might be the perfect person to have this conversation because you know what? I think you were there when we prayed the prayer. Let my husband relocate to locate me. I well, at sure least you were was. part of the early stages of that conversation. And that's where... Um, we are, we actually had a conversation, a podcast episode about, and the title was let my husband relocate to locate me. So y'all go back and listen to that good, 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 that good content, y'all. I feel like everybody listened to that one. Yeah. That was one of the tally (laughs) rate. If you haven't listened, if you're a new listener, that was one of the top, um, episodes. So yeah, you need to go back and listen to that because it was good, good y'all. Anywho, this one's going to be no different. So do you want a man or not? originated i guess the concept um originated with the onset of that prayer and that book that we talked about in that episode and so we're not going to delve into to let my husband relocate me right now but we are going to talk about do you want a man or not because that statement came from my baby sister now you know oh, i'm the oldest i'm nine years older than my younger sister not nine, nine years older and so having said that, when she asked me that, because what was happening was I was like wavering, you know, I was being tossed to and fro when I was dating my husband, like, don't know, like he this, he that, but he is this and that. And I don't know, God, you sure? Oh my God. You know, all of that, all of the nerves that come along with dating someone because so often before the relationship didn't work out the way I had hoped. And so one day I'm driving in a car and I'm driving and my sister's with me and we're talking and I'm like, Jamila, this, that, and the third, I don't even know what we were saying. And she just looked at me and said, do you want a man or not? And I was like, <laughs> that's not just like you talking to but no <laughs> but if y'all know Jamila, you know, you know her personality. Um, she's a whole vibe all by herself. But like literally she was like do you want a man or not and I guess I did because I you know I'm married to the man now but you know I was getting in my own way and that's really what this conversation today is about getting in your own way and missing opportunities Mm. my 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 oh I felt that in my shana right getting in your own way because Sneakily, I'm I'm gonna say this for myself. I'm talking to myself and myself alone. But if it convicts you, or um, if it hits you in your heart, or some kind of way, there are but so many opportunities for. I'm gonna call it the one, even though in my book I I, I suggest that it may not be a one. But what I do suggest is. There are so many opportunities. Let me say, there are not so many opportunities to meet a person who can you can connect with on such a level that y'all be able to connect with for the intent to marry. Because those chances don't always run a- around as frequently for most women. And so having said that, 
it would behoove us, and I'm saying us, to wake up and not get in our own way. Because another thing I, I have not told y'all is I've been dibbling and dabbling in matchmaking, y'all. Oh, goodness. <laughs> so funny when I said I just laughed a little, little kiki but like seriously because I want to see people love if you're looking to be loved hit me up because I do have a I am building my Rolodex for eligible men because I'm not really looking for women so to speak but if you are looking I do have a Rolodex because I am looking because I do have some candidates males who are looking that makes sense because I feel like I mean my husband talked about this. Like I heard that you had males that were looking. I don't know that I know this part. I don't know that well, you shared I, I'm that. Looking, I'm me. looking out for you, but I know the guys that I'm got in my roller deck that you probably would like. You might get in your own way a little bit, but <laughs> my thing is, <laughs> uh, what I'm saying is, I got at least four guys that's looking, and they have given me their criteria. And I'm looking out for him. Like, one guy, I'm going to hook him up in the next, few, hopefully at the top of the year. I'll be able to connect him with who I think the Lord dropped in my spirit for him. But I'm actually planning to have, we're planning to have, and there's been so much going on in our life. Like, we might even be rolling out the floor that's in for a couple of weeks. But that's neither here nor there. We were planning on having a, like a field day, an adult field day. And I'm going to circle back to the top, but y'all just bear with me. Um, we were planning, my, my husband and I were planning on having a adult field day so we can invite some of these people because you got to create opportunities for people to meet people, right? And it's not going to be just for those people we're trying to hook up, but it's going to be with for our friends and family. We just want to have a good time and grill out and especially before it gets too cold outside here in Maryland. So I was saying this would be a good opportunity. Like y'all in the same space, if you like what you see, Get the, the digits for your lead, that kind of thing. But And then you can see how people interact with different people. You can see how you have fun. And it's like no pressure. No pressure to be on your toes because you don't really know who there for you. Does that make oh. sense? <clears throat> she got her finger up, y'all, like she in church. Go ahead, Tim. <laughs> so. One, I know I said a lot. I know I said a lot. Yeah, you said a lot. So I'm going to go back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. But um, I will say this, that is a very cool idea, the adult field day. So I'm here for that. That's I wish cool. you were here for that. Not to get hooked up per se, but you know. But just to have a fun, fun time. Yeah, that, that would be you a know, fun time. That, no, see, that. that's, see, see, she messed it up. <laughs> I know. I'm telling my friends with kids, bring your kids. Sometimes friends with kids don't want to bring their kids. Well, don't so. bring them. I'm just letting them know that it's there and there's an option. But now, I have it may uh, not almost... be no kids, so may you make sure you bring their siblings so they have somebody to play with. But my kid don't have a sibling. Um, however, um, and my kid will be 17 next month. I don't oh, think so that he, he wants hang to hang know, with right? us. Right. Um, he don't want to hang with us anyway. So <laughs> I don't know. He he sometimes be missing his auntie. So he might he might mm -hmm. cut you some slack, but not me. Uh, so let's go back. Let's go back to one thing you said. And I just want to um, just clarify um, that two things can be true at the same time. Okay. Okay. So I do not believe, and I don't think that you, this was your, in, that you intended to say this, but just for the people, in case the people that are out there that was not actively listening, <laughs> okay, um, and only heard the first part and not the whole part. Uh, I do not believe that someone who is in that you will miss what is meant for you. Okay. I do not believe you will miss what is meant for you. So if you have not come across that person that you can build with, it is not too late. Okay. And you still have time. You have not run out of time. All right. I don't think you've run out of time. Um, I don't think you've run out of time. But two, but I do think it could that... be true that you've gotten in your own way when there was an opportunity presented to you to meet someone. So let's let's just put that out well, there. Well, well that, that's kind of counterproductive, right? Right. What you just said, like, say, for but two things can be true at the same time. I just want I just well, want to be okay. clear. Well, we're not saying that time is up for you. because No, we're not saying that time that. is up by no means. By no means. 
Because that I means that, that she would be saying the time was up for me. And the time no, up and for I me, was y'all. literally 35 when <laughs> I met my husband. But y'all know on my part, that podcast, when we say the Lord told me I was going to meet my husband at 35. But that, that also goes to say that all this yin and yang about you got to be a certain age before you meet your mate. The Lord told me what my appointed time was. Exactly. So let's, I just want to clarify some things because uh, she, she left out part of the story. Okay. Well, yeah. She has some, she has some strict instructions. Okay. She had some, some foresight that she was given um, that she was obedient to. All right. But I do believe that there's still time for you, but I also believe that we could get in our own way. And well, I, I say, I we agree with that. I, I, I agree, agree with that as well. But I also believe that you can get in your own way. And I think I, I I think I said, so say for instance, you meet, say for instance, the person that the Lord and somebody that the Lord intended to come into your life could be a good match for you. Cause like, like I said, I think that you are, you can be, uh, what's the word I want to say? Um, that you can have a, a relationship with, personality traits that mesh well with a number of people that makes sense it's a billion mm -hmm. people on the earth right so there's got to be a lot of people on this earth or a few out of percentage of the people that's here that you have a good connection with and that you could marry and make a good life with right mm -hmm. especially if y'all had the same principles values and faith and all the stuff that you want when it's, when we talk about building relationship that meet the criteria that you have set for your life and the the one that God has set for you, okay. but what I'm saying is this: you say, for instance, you meet them, and God is saying, "Sis, my daughter, my my friend, we, you know, this guy could be a good mate for you, but you are stuck in your own way. You're still emotionally charged. You're something is still not meshing well." It could be possible, like you said, that that guy may not want to stick around until you figure that self, that part of yourself out. That could be possible. Or it could also be possible that they are not ready. That could also be possible, that the connection is there, but for whatever reason, they got stuff going on. So two people got to be ready at the same time, by the way. But yeah, timing is timing is paramount. <laughs> Two people gotta be married at the same time. But say for instance, it's you. Sis, say for instance, it's you. All right, let's focus on that. Let's, let's just focus, focus on, on it. Let's focus on it's me. It's, it's me. You, right? Mm -hmm. And he like, I love you. I wanna be with you. But you you keep whatever it is that's holding you back or challenging the relationship that you haven't worked through, maybe it's pushing him away. My point in saying is. Do you want a man or not? Is that that question really sounds harsh, but is do you want to are you ready to heal? Are you ready to address your challenges that are making um the you not draw the person to you that you you would like to in your life? Are you ready to make some moves? Are you ready to move? Because perhaps um the person that you are meant to meet is not in your vicinity and you need to go to a whole nother state are you ready to make a change a shift in your life for different reasons to make the connection are you ready to be obedient to what the lord told you to do the last time that you haven't been obedient to because if you had been obedient right you might have he might introduce yourself or introduce yourself at the coffee shop but because you ain't been obedient or because you ain't gone to the gym it could be so many things that hinder you from not making that connection like when i talk about my story um, if I had not gone to the Congressional Black Caucus, right, would I have met him? I don't know. We could have crossed paths and maybe the Lord would have made it happen a different way. But because I was obedient to what the Lord felt, I felt in my spirit and I knew he was going to show up because that's what he likes to do. Then, yeah, but the thing that could have got me in my own way was... If I had got hung up that we the same height and that when I wear heels, I'm taller than him. You almost tripped over that. You almost tripped over that. But I you didn't. You I almost, almost I could have got in my own way and said, I think there are statistics that say the average man is not even 5'10". That's what they really? said. 
That I thought I, I'm repeating somebody else who repeated a statistic. They said the average man is not. Let's put it like this: the average man is not six feet. So if all of oh, us, well, that's are, true, yeah. All of us are walking around saying we want a six footer. That's what we call we all six get a, How we all gonna get a six footer? And it's not even that many out there. I had a friend tell me. I had a friend tell me. Um, when I was dating somebody, it was like over six feet. Like, girl, you only five four. Lead on for us. <laughs> five nine and above. <laughs> and I got they like almost seven feet for real. They say that's the ball. But um, my point is, if I had got in my own way, when I go back to my scenario that I hope nobody misconstrued, because sis, I'm here for you. I read a whole book about being single. I get it. I understand. But my point is this. If I had let him walk away because I was getting in my own way about him being five, seven and a half, as he like to say, and I'm five, seven. I, it, it could have took me a long time to find somebody else that I was compatible enough with. And then, and then they would have been that, five, five. They wouldn't have been five, or, seven. Or com- right. Or compatible <laughs> enough with, and that the Lord gave me the okay for it could have took me a long time if I had got in my own way. So that is my point in saying sometimes some of us can get in our own way and we don't realize that those types of connections that you have with people, and I do mean healthy connections, those types of connections that you have with people don't always circle back as often. So do you want a man or not? So I want a man. So let, let, let's let's talk about this. Um, you said something, right? You said like we get in our own way. And so do you want a man or not is um, almost synonymous to are you ready to heal or not? Yeah. Basically. So you can be the person. So I found this out in my last relationship, right? And in my last relationship, this man was I did the work. I'm healed. I'm healed. I did the work and, and things of that nature. And all first glimpse, I was like, oh, yeah, like he did do the work. He know who he is and it's that whatever. And I'm not taking away from him because I still think like, oh, he's a good guy. He just is out of season for me. Uh, however, what I realized is he was healed to the point that someone triggered him. Okay. Say that one more time. He was healed to the point that he had been triggered. I am a different person and I come with a different level of healing than maybe say the last person he was with. And so there were things that I saw that I'm like, oh, wait a minute. You know, everybody pause for a second Uh, because I do believe that he did the work and that he was healed to an extent. Right. But healing is a perpetual thing. Right. It's not like, oh, I do this work for this amount of days. And so I'm healed. No. Even if you healed from that, you could still be triggered. You know, oh, always you in, in healing, there's healing. continuous. Right. It's continuous triggers. Sure. It's continuous healing. Absolutely. And so I want. So my first point in this podcast would be we are healed to the point that we are healed, that we are triggered. We are healed in certain environments, but if the environment shifts or changes, we may have some more healing to do in that new environment, okay? Um, And part of healing is being willing to do it, right? Um, This young man would say, randomly say to me, you think I need therapy, don't you? And I just be like, yes, yes, sir, you do. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I, I wasn't saying it in a malicious way. Often I would kind of giggle with it like, uh, yeah, you do. But so do I. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So do I. Like, I think that therapy is preventative care. For sure. So that when a trigger does come, I don't react the way I used to. Yeah. All right. Cool. It, at the very least, I respond instead of reacting. So first takeaway that I want to throw out there is. Yeah, you may be healed, but you are only healed to the extent that you have been triggered mm. and to the extent that your healing has been challenged. 
uh, healing is a continuous thing. I love that. Um, I love that. That that's so true. It's continual. It, it's I, perpetual. Like yeah, yeah. I love that. And I so we should that. be open to that. And so, and it's not if, just healing though. When you talk about the whole relationship thing, right? no. My next thing I would think is I'm reading this book right now called Attached. Okay. Um, it's attached the new signs of adult attachment and how it can help you find and keep love. Oh, I love it, that title. Uh, I think it's by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller, maybe Rachel Heller. Uh, so, I mean, I'm actually, I'm in therapy, right? Uh, and I think that if you are a someone who is described as a healer, you should always be in therapy. Um, if you are the strong friend, you should be in therapy. Uh, if you are the eldest in the family, you should be in therapy probably because most people are in therapy because the people that are around them need therapy. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, but I use therapy as preventative care, right? So, um, so that I won't crack and lose my marbles and whatever uh and so my therapist says she was reading this book and she's like oh you should read it too and it just talks about the attachment styles and like how there are three main attachment styles um avoiding attached anxious attached and secure attached and one of the things that I found very interesting in reading this book was that it was saying that sometimes those who have an anxious attached style attachment style tend to look at those who come we we work better with secure attached people mm -hmm. however we attract avoided attached people okay? okay which is like total opposite right um and so if we have always and we are used to being attack uh, attracting avoided attached people and we are anxious attached that there's this level of um, excitement and adrenaline uh, producing type of moments and environment between the two. It's passionate, it's this, you know, it's, it's, it's exciting. But when someone secure attached comes along, who is the very best for us, mm -hmm. we consider them boring mm -hmm. because it lacks the ex quote unquote excitement, which the excitement really is trauma. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we will pass up a secure attached person because we don't feel the feels when the feels are really our response, our fight or flight response. Mm. And so it suggests that when you've attracted a, a secure attached person that you give it some time to allow your nervous system to calm down and, and get back into an equilibrium in a homeostatic place. And then you will realize that this secure attached person, they're not boring, but it's a calm, peaceful love. Mm. One that you benefit from, one that um, who's attentive and who is consistent, which is what people who have an anxious attachment need. They need someone who doesn't mind being intimate, but someone who is consistent um, and who um, is clear about their intentions and doesn't give mixed signals. Yeah, I love that. So just because, just because it feels bore, quote unquote boring, ask yourself, am I bored or am I just calm? Because I want a calm love. Oh yeah, we love to hear. I want a steady peaceful. love. I want a steady, calm, peaceful love. Mm. That was good. Glad I can help and contribute. <laughs> <laughs> do you want a man or not? Do you want a man or not? So, so do you man or, do you want a man or not, or do you want to stay in the house? Mm. Or just, you know, See, now she wanna be connection. stepping on my toes. You know, do my you house want a man is peaceful. Not? I like be my peaceful. house. Be peaceful. Be <laughs> peaceful. You know, be pe it's peaceful, right? But sometimes, eventually, one day, you want to want to make some noise, okay? So we just leave that there. But anyway, so she said, go outside. Go outside. We outside, outside and be outside. 
I recently heard a guy tell me, one of my potential clients who's looking to be loved. He said to me, when he was telling me about what he's looking for, he said, you know, when I go out, I see women that I am attracted to and I want to approach. And sometimes I do approach, but I got to get through all their friends when they're with them. And he said he, he would love if sometimes the ladies would just go out by themselves or just if a guy approaches kind of separate themselves so let me talk to you over here for a minute but he's just like it's what and this is my husband says this too he said what y'all don't know is and this is my, I've, I've literally heard my husband say the same thing it's intimidating and getting the courage enough to go approach a woman because they don't like rejection either and then on top of that, once they get past their nerves or get past the point where they say, I'm going to go over here and, you know, shoot my shot, as people say, they like, then I got to deal with all your girlfriends who I, I don't want. I'm looking at you, you know, that kind of thing. And he literally said, I said, that's not the first time I've heard that. Like, what's your thoughts? It's research like, out there about that. But I, I have to say, like, you know, but sometimes some of us are not willing to like kind of go out and do things alone, or at least if a man does approach them, give him the, you know, I don't know the past. I don't know how to, you say, let him, let him talk to you while all your girlfriends chiming in and say, you got to buy us a drink too. Just let him offer that, all that kind of thing. But you know, all that energy, they, 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 they since, since they out here saying, they out here saying, it's, it's it's intimidating and they just sometimes this particular guy said he sometimes he don't even approach dating is not a team sport oh okay dating is not a team sport uh and i believe i'm not no expert but i be telling the truth about some things okay and i believe that is why women tend to find their person, their someone, when after they have decided, I'm just going to date myself. Because when they're just dating themselves, they're going out more by themselves. Mm. And therefore, they're opening up, they're creating space for that man to come over and approach them because they're not surrounded by their girlfriends. I can see how that can be intimidating and they are solo. And so when you're dating yourself, you're taking yourself out on dates, meaning that you're not going with your girlfriends and you know, all your friends, it's not a group effort. It's just you going out loving on yourself. So most of the time, you will hear that I wasn't even looking for love. I had decided I was dating myself and I met him. Yeah, because you cleared the way for him because you left your peoples at home. Ah, <laughs> okay? you, left your peoples at home. <laughs> you left your peoples at home or you just, you know, you went out. So like I have a friend who she always going out by herself and she always got somebody in the way. And it's because she goes out by herself. So I took a page out of her book. And I started taking myself on dates and, you know, and, and doing, at first it was a little uncomfortable, right? Cause it's like, oh Lord, people looking at me, people think I don't have anybody to take me out. I mean, cause I have some people that could take me out, but they're not my preference. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think there is a lot of truth and support to the statement and the concept that he's presenting that um, you are more likely to attract people and men are more likely to gravitate towards you when you are so low. So I'm glad you just brought up a point. Okay. Preferences. Because one of mm. my female clients who I'm kind of like coaching, you know. You're like, taking me out calling these people clients already. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's so fun. But we'll go out. And we'll sit at, like, sometimes we'll go out, we'll sit at the bar, you know, or, and guys will come up or they'll talk. And I was like, I'll coach her through. Say something. Say hi. You know, turn, your, turn yourself around a little bit so you let him know you're open. 
don't have your back. You at the ball, and it's some guy sitting at the thing. You got your back turned to them. Like, you you so engrossed with your girlfriend's conversation. Sis, turn around. Turn around. What are y'all doing? I wish y'all could see her acting this out. Look. <laughs> <laughs> what y'all doing? Let me tell y'all something. I ain't trying to. I'm not trying to brag. I ain't want to brag. No, no. But I'm saying I ain't trying to brag. I'm being like so, like not myself, like my my typical self. This is how I normally act, y'all. But uh, <laughs> trying to be funny, but no, this is how she act, y'all. <laughs> and this is how I <laughs> trying to be funny, but. Sis ain't got no trouble, married or single, attracting nobody. I don't know. And I think once recently, we my husband was in New Orleans. He had to come and step in between some guys. Okay, sis, you still got it? I still got it, <laughs> sis, y'all. Listen, I'm stroking all of my twists, my braids, child. Because, and I think, I'm very friendly. Let's talk about it. You're I'm, unguarded. I'm not like I'm very I've always been friendly. No, I'm is a difference between a friendly and a flirt. Okay. Let's be clear. I'm okay, serious. but it's nothing wrong with flirting. Because... I ain't talking about I'm not I ain't saying it's nothing wrong because I do know how to flirt. I'm up there teaching my clients how to flirt. Like, girl, that's why I told you turn around. Okay. Turn around and say hello. How are you? This anyway, turnaround is taking me out. Listen, turn around. <laughs> I wish y'all could see. We should. We should. Let, we should have done. We should have done video this. with this <laughs> one. <laughs> turn around. Right. Dr. Jackson had no behavior on this podcast. Listen, I am not on my best behavior, y'all. But anyway, so I think is. Do you do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? I understand you, and I think translation. Yes. Is you have to have. Uh, uh, open energy. So y'all know all my degrees is in psychology, uh, practitioner track, all that kind of stuff, therapy background, right? Therapy background. And um, body language takes up most of communication. Body language, tone, your words are most of the time the least important. It is literally how you say it. That matters most. My I grew up, my dad used to always say, you can say anything you want to say, even to me. It's just how you say it. And so I've always grown up with that thought in my mind. Mm. And I think um, what you are speaking of is being open. A lot of women walk around very guarded because they're in survival mode. Because the last person they do right. Because they're trying to protect themselves. Sure. And what you don't realize is when your guards go up, you think you're protecting yourself. But what you're really doing is keeping people out. That's good. Come on, psych practitioner. Okay. Psych practitioner. I can't even say it. Psych <laughs> practitioner. <track. laughs> so what you're really doing is keeping people out. So maybe what you want to have instead of a guard is a boundary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because a boundary is about protecting you. A guard is to keep people out. Um, and so you have to be open. So uh, let's circle back to that. Um, I forgot the word you used, but I, I don't know what you used. You said something. I ain't saying flirt, but do something. So if you're like me. Oh, friendly. 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 Yes, friendly. So that's why I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. We're being silly today. Okay. So friendly. And not to say flirt. So one of the things that I always get accused of by all of my friends, I feel like Jazz may have accused me of this as well, is they're like, you be flirting and you don't even know it. Oh. <laughs> see, see, what y'all don't know, if y'all don't know what she look like, she got that long, silky hair, like uh, Rapunzel or Pocahontas. That has so nothing she, to so do with it. Whipping it to the side. Sweeping, I do not. Sweeping, it to be in a L'Oreal commercial, sweeping it to the side. Most of the time, y'all, I'm in a messy bun. Don't believe Listen, the hype. When that okay. hair is out, sis is moving it to and fro. Okay, I can't help it if it moves, right? Okay. Listen, that's why I said uh, a little <laughs> while ago, we don't have the same hair. Ma'am, I'm not doing this with you. But what, I, what I'm what i saying is sometimes, like, I, if I'm comfortable, like, 
not even if I'm comfortable, if I'm talking, somehow it, 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 it turns flirtatious and I don't even know it. And I'm not intending to flirt. Um, but sometimes you need to cue into your body and cue into what you're feeling and, and, and what your body is saying, right? What your spirit is saying, not just what your mind is saying. So I am a recovering overthinker. You, you, you and so recovering you recover i'm trying i'm trying to recover oh, I'm, oh. I'm trying to be recovering I'll be okay i'm apart. still guilty i'm still guilty of overthinking okay Listen. it is a it is a hard habit to kick I get it. um but sometimes you have to get out of your mind and into your body mm -hmm. and so your body literally will give you signals and I'm not talking about sexual or anything like that, but we'll give you signals when something is good for you. That's true. Uh, if something is good for you or someone is good for you or energy is good for you, your body tends to lean in. Mm -hmm. And if something is not for your highest and greatest good, your body tends to sway back. And so maybe in these moments, instead of fortifying the wall, do, 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 you know, and guarding yourself, all right? that maybe we let the guard down, allow the boundaries to exist and be less in our mind and more in our bodies. Yeah. Pay attention to your body. It Pay will attention. sway towards, it will sway towards what is good for you or what it wants or what it likes and will sway away from what it doesn't. If you ever notice, um, if you are observing a man and a woman and that woman is interested in that man, her body gives cues when she crosses her legs. Mm -hmm. They turn towards in towards that person. Uh, she leans in when she talks. You know, there are different cues um, that your body signals and gives you to let you know, okay, this might be good for us, you know. And then there are cues where your body is like, we gotta go. Ripley. And you and you and you should go. And so Perfect segue. You said red flag. I think that society has taught society. Society has taught us to always look and identify red flags. And I think we should start being in the practice of identifying green flags because what you yes. give energy to grows. And so if I give my attention to red flags, then I'm going to just keep attracting red flags because that's what I'm giving my attention to oh, but so if good. I give my attention to green flags then more green flags and green flag opportunities will arise in my life and that will help us start get, getting in our own way absolutely yeah I love that all right so so far we have so much we have um we don't want to be in our own way, right? We want, just because it's bore, it feels boring in the beginning does not mean that it's boring. It could just be peaceful and calm. We are healed to the extent that our healing has been tested or triggered, that we have been triggered. And so healing is a perpetual thing. We have to be always open to healing and growing. Because if you're not open to growing in a relationship, that relationship will what? Die. It will wither. It will dissolve. Dissipate. However you want to say, whatever you want to use. So we want to be open to the healing. We want to, bored does not mean, calm does not mean bored. It could mean peaceful. We have to be open Put the guards down, employ the boundaries. I mean, and I'm a third little. <laughs> and, listen, and get out here. Get out here, y'all. Get out here. Let me tell you something. About a week ago, now, I don't know when y'all gonna listen to this episode, but a week ago, September 2023, went to the Black Caucus with my man, my man, my man. And child, the men was out there. All ages and all stages, child. And so, not all stages. All stages, <laughs> whatever it is that you're looking for, was there. Well, I'm gonna be outside this weekend, Let's and I'm gonna outside. try to employ. And I'm going to not try. I am going to employ 
all of the things that we have talked about today. Yeah. And I'm going to report back. Report back. I'm going to report okay. back. I'm going to be outside. I'm going Listen, to a comedy show Friday night. And be open to all stages and all ages. I got to find... All right, wait. I need you to be Listen, more specific about that. I'm, I'm being specific. I'm getting there. I got a friend who's married to someone eight years younger than her. Do what you will with that. They're happily married. I got a friend who's married to someone. I got, I think, five or six years older than her. Got a friend who's married to someone about three years younger than her. I got a friend, and I do mean friend, who is in her 70s, who just got remarried. She's 74. He's 79. Be open. Ha ha. Y'all picking up what I'm putting down? Be open. Because you never know when love will circle back to you. And then look at my friend. When she went, I got, first of all, she didn't even tell me. She texted me. And ask me if my address is still the same. And yes, I if y'all know me, I love me some golden girls, y'all. I am good friends with some older women who are just like, you know, I love me some. But anyway, um, it asked me if my address was still the same. And I said, what couple weeks, about a week later, I got something in the mail. And I said, I started screaming when I opened up that mail, like, oh, my God, she didn't got married. That is so wow. good. I remember when she, we were working together, and she was my work mother. And we, we talked about everything like she was my girlfriend. And we have developed a relationship from that point until now. And she's in her 70s, and I'm definitely in my 40s. And she got married, y'all. So my point is, if you're looking to be loved and you are looking with the intent to be married, that's what we're talking about. Do you want a man or not? Are you ready to be whole? Are you ready to be healed? Are you ready to go outside? Are you ready to be open to the love? Are you ready to look for those green flags instead of all of the red flags? What's working well? Are you ready to... You know, just be open to someone that can come into your life and just add value to your life. If that's you. And, and that same subscribe. that same breath. Pause one second. Okay. That same breath. If you have to be open to someone adding value, but you also have to be willing to add value. That part. This is a reciprocal nature there's some reciprocity to be had so don't just be looking to be loved you should be looking to love mm -hmm. don't just be looking to who can better your life whose life can you better don't just be looking for the perfect partner be the perfect partner and right and meet so. the person where they are um we, i know we all listen to who what, I can't think of the attorney's name who who said she would not marry a bus driver unless he owned the unless he owned the bus um I can't think of her name right now that's her truth stand in it there you go I don't know is she but still single I I don't know her relationship status but what I am mm -hmm. saying is whatever be open because just because somebody's placement in life is not where you want it to be now doesn't mean it can't go there but that doesn't mean that bus let me tell you something that don't mean that bus driver couldn't be the best man for you in that moment in your life he can pray for this this bus driver can be add so much more value to your life than somebody making the upper six figures that you like, dang, I wish I had that bus driver. You know, my, my point is, I mean, just be open to love because one, cause, cause the, 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 the real deal is one day you can have money, one day you can have a business, and the next day you can be flat broke. And let's be clear, like, <laughs> if they making big money, they not home. <laughs> okay. Oh, let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Okay. My, my husband told me I didn't know this at the time but he told me he had like $200 in the bank when we first met he said but you ate out didn't you every time <laughs> we went somewhere you ate and you ate though no. 
So we, we ain't really, just like him. <laughs> we, he was in the middle. He was in a transition. So if I had, and I could tell he was in a bit of a financial transition, but you know, he was a nice guy. I'm going out and get some free food. Child. That's all we, that's all, that's all I was doing at that time. But I got to, you know what I'm saying? It's okay. But anyway, what I'm saying is mm-hmm. we was going out. He's a good guy. We was having good conversation. I think we probably, from the time that we met, we talked almost like every day. I don't think, matter of fact, I don't think there's hardly any day that we did not talk since the time that we met. Even while we were just getting to know each other. And so my point is, if I had looked at where he was then, like I got clients now and I'm calling them clients. (laughs) They ain't paying me nothing, but I'm working with, I'm working with these ladies because I want to see people happy. I want to see people whole. I want to see people change. And if I can offer a bit of advice unsolicited or not to help think I can help somebody I'm going to say it sis. I'm going to say I'm not going to let you be out there by yourself so my, my point is say it, y'all. I'm going to say it I'm going to try and say it in so much love and I might put a joke on the end of it seriously but here's the thing people um I had a girl she got this list that's going back to your preferences let's go back let's circle back to that before we hop off real quick mm-hmm. preferences she has so much on this list I don't do that I don't do this. I don't do that. I'm mean, one of the things she said, he not my type. And I said, what's your type? She said, going back to that six feet. He got she's you four or five. You four point one feet tall. Ma'am. I want a six to my six feet. I said, girl, anybody that you meet gonna be taller than you, even if he Kirk Franklin height. No shade to Kirk Franklin. Mm-hmm. Hello? No shade, Kirk. I'm going to your concert a couple weeks. No shade. My point is. You got this list. And I asked her, when was the last time you dated your type? She's let me know. You know what she said to me? Guess what? Never. She said? Never. No, no, she that's not that's not close. Not quite. She said in college. I said, girl, you've been graduated for 20 years. <laughs> How is that your type if your type is not approaching you? How is that your type? So this is my thing about the type thing, and then we can close out. Is <laughs> I have started to treat First of all, I don't think I have a type, but other people say I do. I don't think I have a type, but I do have a list. Okay. (laughs) And what I have learned is just like I edit my life. I need to edit my list. list. And I'm not saying subtle, but when you know better, you do better. And if you have the same list that you wrote back in college and we sitting in our forties now, you're not doing enough editing, sis. Okay, and, and, and I've heard people say you got to become the list. You do. You have to. That goes back to what I said. If you want to be loved, then you have to be willing to love. You have to. You want a, a great partner, then you have to be a great partner. Uh, I literally just went back last week, and I'm putting my business out there. But I literally just went back last week and edited, revamped my list. Okay, revamp my list because things that used to be important to me. 10 years ago, five years ago, <clears throat> last year, <laughs> no longer important to me. They That's are hard. important because I've realized that sometimes having that one thing, I would have to sacrifice three more. And I realized that that one thing is not worth the sacrifice. That part. And so all these women who want a man making a certain amount of money, the business owner, Tiffany Wright. They don't be home, y'all. They don't be home. <laughs> they don't be home. Let me tell you something. My mother, my husband is home, but he in that his office in the workspace in that basement. So mentally, he ain't home. He ain't home. Like he in a meeting. He working. He, a, he on Zoom. And if he not there, he like, all right, I'm about to go to. You, I'm I'm going to X Y State. You going with me? I'm gonna be gone by the week. You going? He yeah, buy my ticket if I if I want to go or whatever. Like he bought me a ticket to Florida. I I got some going. I my guess point, I'm going. <laughs> yeah, I want to go, so I got to make it happen. But my point is this. They they be busy. And so if you think you're going to be sitting home like the Cosby Show and Claire Huxtable and, and Heathcliff and depending on your age or you're going to be sitting at home like with, with that with that, sh- that sh- show, My Wife and Kids, <laughs> that's whatever one of the shows you watch where they went to bed together at the same time and you think that was happening every night, you're wrong. 
And I'm not knocking, I'm not knocking a businessman because I think they are very attractive. And I'm not knocking a wealthy man because I think they are very attractive. All I'm saying is, if you have a businessman about his business, he you have there, got yeah. to expect that he ain't going to be there all the so time. You, find, you see, I got this podcast here. My husband is downstairs. <laughs> not, I, I, it's not the only reason. I want to. I was about to say this podcast was birthed. But, but I'm saying, if what if I had nothing to do? I would be down there nagging him like when you going to be done working. Or you will be upset that he is gone all the time. That's my point. And so. He definitely got more than two hundred dollars in the bank now. <laughs> it's business is thriving, but I got other friends whose husbands are high six figures, close to near millions of dollars annually. Their husband is working all the time, up and down the highway, flying here and there. And there. They give them their attention that they need. But one of my friends recently said, "I gotta find me something to do." literally she said that she was like because she doesn't have children right now and her husband is super super busy he has multiple six-figure businesses and she like i love the life that he provides for us but i gotta find me something to do. She, got, she gotta find something to do i said oh look we can start walking some more because because that's what i do when 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 um when my husband is working i make sure he eat he and he's down um and i'm um, lower level working and I um make sure he got his food I cook him dinner or I make sure there's food available for him to eat I'm going to the gym I'm going to I'm taping podcast episodes I'm working on my own business but I what I do love about my husband is the weekend generally is dedicated to us going to church making connection he does do some work on the weekends but I do he does set aside time and in the evening he but li literally he will stay up super super late working he we, we ain't always he flipping clear you know what I'm saying or <laughs> um when I'm, all the mother tv shows where the, the husband and the wife going to sleep at the same time I mean um, sometimes the dates used to be naps <laughs> <laughs> that used to be that used to be our dates, like sometimes naps, because he worked so much. He was always on a flight. He was always, you know, taking care of business. And I think, like I said, I think that's very attractive. But you also have to have a come to Jesus moment with yourself and ask, is this something that you really want? Can you live this type of lifestyle? It's true. Because it is challenging. It is challenging. And if you don't have a strong foundation. It could be I'm, and, and let me be clear. I'm definitely not talking about, and I'm not knocking it. You know, I'm 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 not talking about the lower six figure guy. I'm not talking about that guy. I've dated that guy. That guy is available. I'm talking about the guy who is upper six figures or more business, or maybe he's a CEO of a Fortune 500 from a CEO, COO. Maybe he's an executive in government. Or industry, that's, that's, like that's, maybe they're in the industry, you know, like some type of industry. I'm talking about he's like busy. I'm not talking about somebody who just making the lower six figures and there's nothing wrong with that. Trust what I believe. But I'm saying a lot of women are saying, I want somebody who makes six figures. And I, I want a wealthy know, man and they financially wealthy. Man, wealthy. And they financially well. I don't know what your tier is that you would desire. And y'all already know the statistics on the availability of those men. But the ones that you may want who are in that category, you have to think about that type of life because it's not the type of life that you see on TV. It's not for the week, honey. Trust me. And I'm strong and it is not for the week. Okay. Um, and so you have to really yeah. ask yourself, okay, like, am I willing to sacrifice X, Y, and Z because the financial status or life that he could provide or that he does provide. And the other thing is, Sis, it's nothing wrong with being a cat woman, but it's something real empowering about having your own money to keep. Well, okay. Well, you always gotta have a kitty. That's my daddy told me. Yes, yeah. He but said, "Going there, we ain't going there, we ain't going there." Um, we are talking about do you want a man or not? Um, this conversation has been great. Your daddy gave you great advice. I think somebody, <laughs> one of my one of my fam older cousins sent me a wedding card in the in the mail and one of her note at the bottom of the card said, 
keep your own bank account. Uh, and that works for some people. And some people, no, you know, people. She put a little note, like a like she was keep you a kitty. That's what they used to like, call she, it. She put the she wrote the note at the bottom real tiny, like she was whispering a secret to like, the person. <laughs> Have you a stash? Just what she said. Yeah, <laughs> Be but, able to buy the table. Don't just bring something to it. This was a good conversation. This was good. This was good. So did we we so know what we walking talk away about. with? Yeah. What we walking away with is so much. It is an open jar of things that we can talk about with this conversation. I have so many funny, funny stories about my clients. I do have some clients. That's just people that people no, are close to me. No, seriously. I'm look I am looking to help women because I know what it's like to desire but not have it to want that two income household to want that support to want that forever date to want you know what you might see other people have which you shouldn't be coveting but i'm just saying you just want that connection you want that human interaction sometimes you want to smell some cologne that belongs all to you and so i'm praying for all of the single ladies out there we'll have more conversations we, we i think we're going to do a part two or three and three. This may just be a recurring things we know for sure. Yeah, things we but know for sure. I think this is an important and necessary conversation to help us all learn and grow. Um, me too. I learn to grow because there's so much we, we can even be talking about as far as marriage is concerned. But this has been the Girl Go Global podcast, and I want to thank all of you for listening. And I just want to pray a special prayer for all of the single women who desire a mate. Maybe there's someone out here out there who feels like there is no hope. That feels like they're not wanted. That feels like they feel unloved. They feel rejected. They just feel so many emotions. They desire a mate so badly that they, they can almost just settle for anything just to have a man in their presence. And so I'm just want to say a quick prayer for all of the women out there who are single, who desire a mate, that you would find your love in Jesus first. And then all those other things shall be added. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the opportunity to share tonight. I thank you for my friend Tiffany Renee from the Muse and the Messenger, Father. I thank you, O oh God, for the gems that she dropped. And I thank you, O oh God, for all of the single women who are surviving singleness and may not quite be thriving in singleness right now. But I thank you, oh God, that they will find the faith, the know-how, and the grit to step into their purpose in ways that lead them to their purpose partner. And I thank you, oh God, that you would comfort them where they need comfort, give them information when they need information, give them resources when they need resources, and give them the love and care that they need and surround them in a circle of love, a circle of unity, that gives them the comfort they need to know that there are brighter days coming despite marriage or not. So in Jesus' name, I pray that all will be well and all is well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the Girl Go Global Podcast. We would love, love, love to hear how you are enjoying the content. And if you would like to donate, to support the great work and the great value of what really is a ministry for me, please click the link in the description. Thank you so much in advance for your support.